Hello and welcome to the Point 99 podcast. Episode 10 of season 2 can mean only one thing. It's the finale once again. The last 10 weeks have positively flown by. Uh, I'm kind of sad in a way to, to only do 10 episodes and draw a line under it for the season, but I'm going to stick to my guns, I'm going to stick to the plan, and I'm going to start preparing for season three. But more importantly, is I'm going to have a few weeks off, have a nice bit of rest, and really get some relaxation in before Amsterdam rolls around. Before I get too ahead of myself, let's get the episode underway, and I have an absolute belter lined up for you today and that really comes down to my guest Omar Stanley Pesodas. I have been looking forward to speaking to Omar all season actually before the season even started I've been looking forward to the day where I could have a good old chat with the absolute legend. He's a mega star in content creation I would say he's an influencer, but having had the interview with him just the other day, he doesn't like that word. He doesn't like to think of himself as an influencer, even though I know, and I think many others know, he is a massive influencer. He helps so many people feel confident to lace up their shoes, get out for a run, and he just makes the whole running environment so much more approachable. So, yep. I was delighted with the chat that I had with Omar. He made life so much easier for me. He did all the heavy lifting and I think that will be conveyed in the interview. Very few questions were asked on my part. He just, he took off and he ran with it. And that's what Omar does. He is an absolute phenomenal guy. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty much a little bit of a fangirl about him and that will come in the introduction to the uh, to the interview. As always, I'm going to have to do the introduction. It is part of the course now and I did forget about it last time round and I had to add it in afterwards. But let's get on with it. For new listeners, the Point 99 podcast is a running podcast for runners by runners. If you're new to running, we hope to have topics and discussions that will help you along whatever path your journey is taking. Or for any seasoned runners, maybe some stories that will have you empathising with our experiences. Whether it's lessons we've learned during our own journeys, embarrassing stories or heartstring pulling moments, we hope you'll stick with us and we'll try to share some good vibes, motivation and positivity and hopefully we can have a laugh along the way. It may have taken 20 episodes but I now have that whole spiel memorised. I don't have to look at any scripts. Uh, I'm going for the more organic approach. So yeah, It'll stick with me for season three. I'll just have to try and remember it now when I'm out running. It can be my little mantra. I can try and remember the introduction. Let's get on with some news from the wider running community and some fantastic events taking place over the weekend. First up, we have a new event, the Run Right 5K, which had a few familiar faces down taking part. The event itself has been set up and organised by David Wright, an absolutely amazing athlete in the Instagram community. And uh, oddly enough, a Scottish athlete that doesn't have underscores or spaces in his Instagram handle, but that is David Wright 1989 Give him a check, have a check of the event, which is at run.right. Uh, it looked like an amazing day. Some great photos coming out, but uh, we did have, as I say, familiar faces from the community. We had Kaylee, the Happy Diet. We had Jace, the Edinburgh Runner. Stuart Rowan was there as well. Stuart runs a lot and also George Easy Miles. Like I say, it looked like an absolutely amazing day. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get down myself. David had contacted me in the past and asked if I was interested, but uh, maybe next year, fingers crossed, he had a phenomenal um, event. I won't use that word too much, as I say, but uh, hopefully had an amazing event and it happens again in the future because I'd be keen to get down there, especially if there's so many familiar faces taking part. Next up, we have the Cumbernauld 10k. Now, I know for a fact I'm going to miss a lot of people here because I only saw two chaps appearing on my feed at the event and I know that's not correct. So as always, 
shout at me, let me know in my DMs that I missed you and I will put out an apology. But first up, we have Bob Burrell, my fellow Short Short fans. Uh, he was at the event absolutely smashing it and having a great time. But moreover, we had Ryan Miller of the Press Play and Run podcast doing some volunteering work and pacing as the 45 minute pacer. I've never been an official pacer at an event, but good on Ryan giving back to the wider running community as he's doing a lot across a whole spectrum of different things. He is constantly giving back. So kudos to Ryan for his pacing efforts and helping people get to their goals, helping people beat their PBs. It's uh, an amazing thing to be doing. Now, finally, a uh, massive shout out to everybody that took part at the big half, but especially last week's guest, my good friend and previous co-host, Runner Man Steve. I am glad to say that Steve was still smiling at the end and uh, yeah, a bit of a cheeky PB scored as well. And I think there was a few PB scored across the whole spectrum of events over the weekend. So massive congratulations to everybody you had a belt of a weekend for it. I hope you're all feeling great now. You've done your easy kind of recovery sessions back into it. And uh, yeah, it's been looking like a great week for everybody so far. For myself, it's been a fairly quiet affair over the past week and over the weekend. No park run at the weekend. Um, I thought I would have a well-deserved lie-in on Saturday. And even with mileage, I've been very, very um, restrained, I think the best way of saying, um, because I knew I had tired legs. I was tired off the back of the 24 and I'm very conscious of trying not to burn myself out on the road to Amsterdam. So I took it easy, some easy miles, some slower paces. In fact, I did try and get out for a half marathon on Sunday I did get the distance but I really did struggle. I know where I went wrong. I know where my, my nutrition, my hydration, all the outside of things was not ideal and it really just pushed myself to get back. But lessons were learned. You're always learning as an athlete so I know where I went wrong and I know where I can build. But otherwise moving forward into the new week Again, very, very calm, very restrained, still feeling some of the effects. So I'm about to hit the road and go for a run after I finish recording the podcast. Maybe get five or 10 kilometers in, just take it easy. I've still got like five, six weeks to go. I don't want to burn myself out, but I am definitely feeling the 16 week program to be a lot harder than doing the 12 week program. But on that, I want to shout out anyone who does a 16 week program for a marathon. I have no idea how you can do it time and time again. 12 weeks is such a compressed uh, affair. I, I get that. And it is hard in its own right. But for 16 weeks, I've, I've not got the end in sight yet. And I am absolutely zonked all the time. I can see where Ryan was coming from when he was talking about his road to Edinburgh and just how tired he was feeling. Back to 12 weeks if I'm doing another marathon after this. I really do not like 16 week programs. I'll cover a little more about my plans and what I'm going to do in my off time before season three comes back onto the airways. But I'm conscious that my chat with Omar did go on a little bit longer than I had initially planned. I didn't want to take too much of Omar's morning, being the massive time gap that we had. I was at the end of my day. He was at the beginning of his. But I absolutely loved every minute of our chat. And like I say, there was no actual intro to it. I just hit record and yeah. Omar ran with it. He did all the heavy lifting and uh, I'm, I'm super appreciative for the man giving me some of his time and hopefully in the future we can touch base again. We do cover a lot of interesting and important subjects. There were a lot that we didn't and we did have post-recording chat on the hate that can be part of the community. There are things, aspects of the community that we don't see that often, um, but they are they are there and I would like to shout them out wherever possible. Unfortunately, I didn't get a recording of that, but just be mindful. Whatever you say to people, it does have consequences. Uh, you might not think what you're saying is bad, but you've just got to be nice. If you can't be nice, again, I said this in season one, to quote um, Rob from the 
what the Fartlek podcast. If you can't be nice, get in the sea. Um, but I won't dwell on that too much. As I say, there were bits and pieces we didn't get into the recording. I'll hopefully have, have him back in the future. It was an amazing opportunity to have him on. And uh, yeah, at that, I'm going to let it play. And I will record a little intro just to fangirl just that little bit more. Today, I have the absolute pleasure of sitting down with an incredible influencer from the Instagram running community. Having followed his justifiable rise to running community royalty over the past couple of years, it's a massive privilege to be joined by the man himself today. He's a passionate runner who has been inspiring us all with his running journey, be it with content pre and post run or reels that bounce between informative and inspirational to hilarious and motivational. But it's not just running on the cards, there's plenty of strength and conditioning to boot as well. There's certainly a reason he's absolutely shredded and is making massive strides in his running journey. And that could be summed up in one word, dedication. But before I fangirl too much, let's finish the introduction and welcome Omar Stanley Pesodas to the show, better known as Omar Runs Napa. Uh, we've been following each other for quite a while, but I don't think we've actually, like, other than just DMs, uh, it'd be good to kind of just chat. Um, I, I'm also conscious though, I don't want to take up too much of your morning because you've got work to do as well. <laughs> I do. I have, it's okay. I did move some things around, but uh, I know you and I have been trying to get this to work. So um, we'll make it work. Yeah. I would have, I would have done it a lot earlier before now, but I'm kind of, I'm glad in a way that I, that we didn't because with, your marathon just having taken place. I mean, there's no better time to cover anything, but, but now, um, yeah, it's a good timing. Actually, it's a good timing. If uh, some of the recordings I did a lot earlier than I would have liked, but maybe about a month or two. And then there was uh, different runs or things on and I kind of missed, I missed the boat with some of them, but, um, yeah. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to this. I have been for, I have been for a while. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, just, just, it just happened. Uh, I'm still like, processing my entire it's just insane you know listen i i never run marathons before i started running running marathons this year yeah um i decided in late december of of 2022 hey actually I, you know I, I could do a marathon you know that was basically what i thought you know just you know prior to that i never thought i never never thought that i would run a marathon you know it, it wasn't you know my 20s that just sounds like a lot of miles and put your body through that. And, and, um, and then as I start to think about it, I'm like, Hey, why not? You know, I'm, I'm, why not go for it? So, um, I signed up for CIM, which is in this December. Yeah. Um, and I, and that was like a year. So I'm like, okay, I have a whole year to train. And I'm like, wait, why not just do one in the, in, in early, in early 2020, 2023. So I signed up for Napa my hometown. Yeah. But I had a conflict. Um, I actually, my, my brother-in-law, um, got engaged, engaged and got, you know, it's going to get married and he is going, we're going to Vegas, Las Vegas. He was, so I'm like, okay. And it was that weekend. So of course I couldn't miss his wedding. So I had to cancel the marathon. Super bummed about that. I excited to go to Vegas, but I also then look, was looking for another marathon. And then I started, I saw LA and just, you know, an hour flight from, from where I'm at. And that's where I, I, that's the first marathon. And, uh, and, and I, I started training for that and it was fantastic. It was, it was very different from, from Napa because the LA marathon is, it has a lot of hills. So yeah. it, it has a huge um, elevation gain, which is what very different. Napa is very flat. Um, so that was a different type of training, but I was hooked after that. I, w- I was hooked. And then I sent up for Santa Rosa, which happened uh, last, uh, last week. <laughs> Um, and then, um, and then CIM is happening. So it's just a trajectory of what's happening. It's pretty insane. And then the timing of it too, you know, a three, a three sixteen in LA, a three Oh one last week, which is insane. I never thought I'd even do that. And then I'm going for now a sub three in, in yeah. December, um, has been pretty awesome and I'm excited. And I think, uh, you know, it's just an awesome ride that I'm, I'm just kind of writing this, this out and, and it's been a awesome adventure but other than that i think the this account when i created in in november of 2020 has also just 
then I could, I never thought it would be what it is now. Talking to, you know, make podcasts, talking to you, partnering with Nike, all these things that had happened, um, I never thought it was even a thing yeah. um, until I just started posting my runs and somehow things just happened organically and it's been a beautiful ride. No, I really, mean, it's been justifiably a so as well, though, because every, every, I think every piece of content you pop is just super inspirational and really motivational. Um, I think it's a justifiable rise. I was, I was doing that. I, I think every day I, 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 I like everything you do, but then even going back and looking back, it's just, it's insane. The amount of the main of increase you've had in such a short space of time, really. But as I say, it's justifiable. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's really great stuff. Um, yeah. So I, I, I will say it to your podcast and I know you, you, you talk to other runners, you know, that have one as big years. as you, <laughs> well, no, but you have people, <laughs> and I don't even think it's, 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 I mean, it's, it's insane to even say that, to think that, but I, you know, I, I, I will, I wouldn't say that I just started from nothing to something. I've, I've been active. I, I was never athletic. Yeah. I was in band when I was in high school. I played the drums. I never really was the athletic type. I never even went to the, went to the gym. I didn't, you know, I didn't care for that. And then I started to work out, do weight training, and I like that. And I started to run, you know, as part of cardio, you know, to warm up, yeah. you know, things like that. But never, you know, because my husband would just said, "Oh, well, you know, you you were active before, you know, before you you became a runner." Um, but I was. That's true. But I think there's a, a concept that changes when you dedicate your time to running versus just doing it as a K, hey, a warm up or a cool down at the gym or a quick mile, two three mile run. That's that's great too. But then taking that into the training for a marathon or a race or having it be part of your life, you know, it's a very different shift that happens. And I think it did, that's a different type of dedication. And I would say that it's been the hardest thing that I've ever done. And I've, I've weight trained. I've, I've been 15 pounds heavier, um, you know, lifting heavy weights. And I think running has been the most humbling thing for me that I've ever done because it's sometimes it's good. Oftentimes it's hard yeah. and you know it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And there's no, there's no rhyme or reason. Sometimes you, you can eat the same every day. You can do the same things you're doing, get the same amount of sleep. And just some days it just, it's like a switch has been turned off and you just have no energy. Exactly. And it's so, it's a mental struggle sometimes, but that's what I love about this, this sport is, is that is, is the mental, the mental strength of it. Um, you know, somebody was asking me, what did you do different this time around, you know, from last time? Now, these are things different, but I also learned to endure pain. And it's a, it's, you know, marathons are hard. Yes, they are. <laughs> as a second time, or maybe as many that me, somebody that's done 20 of them, it's, it's a hard, it's a mental thing. It's always hard. It's never going to be easy. You just know how to endure that pain for, you know, you know how it feels. Yeah. And so I was, when I was in the pain cave at mile 20, 21, 22, I'm like, oh, okay, I know how this feels. I know this is gonna this is painful, you know, you know, your legs are getting tired, things are starting to ache, you know. Yeah. But at my mental, I'm like, uh, I got this. Mental, I was like, um, there's no way this is gonna, you know, defeat me. I, I worked so hard for this, and this is no way this is gonna define like no, that's the change I think. Whereas yeah. before I would okay, I would step back or let you know, just take it easy. Okay, you know, it was it was just mental change there. And I think that's the for me, the biggest difference is the mental the greatness that has changed in me. Yes. Because I had, I knew I was going to get it. I, it was no doubt in my mind I was going to go for that goal. I went so dedicated into this race that there was nobody to convince me otherwise. So with you know? that, though, it's, was the one minute 40, that, that must have hurt more than any of the pain that you experienced over the whole marathon, so close to a, so close to the three the three hour. That's insane in its own but then having that small margin. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, my coach and I talked about this. And um, so we were planning for a 303. The difference between a, that and a sub three is a lot. You know, that mm. even that, and you're, and you're right, in the, those, you know, where can you plug in those, that difference? Well, when I structured my plan, um, it would have changed it a bit. The tracing would have been a little, little different. It would have changed maybe the way I ran that race. Um, I had no regrets. I wasn't going for a sub three in this case. So I, but I knew a, th a 303 is what the goal was. And we talked about sub three 
we talked about that and, and he's like, if you're feeling great, you know, you could start at this, you know, at this mile and start, in, you know, basically a progression of it, yeah, yeah. you know, start easy and going, you know, pro- progressing down. Then, and I was like, okay, I, I didn't want to risk it because adding that added risk to the overall result. Like, what if I do cramp? What if, what if, you know, this does happen and I don't even miss, I missed the 303 altogether. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, I think I was. I think I'm a sub three condition. I'm at least at two fifty nine. I would say that maybe, if I was to give it harder. But um, not that I wasn't. I just this goal was to get a BQ. Yeah. But you're right. I another table. I don't. I don't think about that too much. I guess because um, I knew going in it was a three hundred three, three hundred one is even even better. You beat um, you. You went with a goal. You got better than your goal. So I fell off towards the end. Yes. Yeah. As yeah. close as it was, it really doesn't make head and their tail to you because it's it wasn't your goal to get sub three and you have a goal in your next marathon to get a yes. sub three yeah and yeah. that in that race as you know cam in is a, it's a perfect course it's a fast course the energy is going to be insane i think um that i i'm i will that's the goal that that's the race i want to get sub three so you know starting the year for 316 and the year with the <laughs> sub three i think it's a great it's a great uh it's trajectory. insane Hopefully, I, but hopefully everything's fine. Hopefully my, my body is rest. Hopefully I don't get injured. All these things that external factors that that I yeah. just can't control. Yeah, um, yeah. Hopefully I have a good race. As you know, sometimes it's not your day. It's not, you know, so. The weather um, might not be the best. Exactly. Although where exactly. you are, it always looks beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I said I was, I've been lucky in, in that in, even in Napa. So it's, yeah, I still see, it seems like the world is having like this heat wave, right? Um, in my little bubble, it's been very, very cool. I haven't, I don't, I don't have the humidity that most of you guys have. I don't have those high, high heat days. We haven't had those here. We've been lucky. So I'm not taking that for granted. I do make poke fun of it. You know, you know, we can't wait for, you know, for spring, but or for fall when cool weather. So I have like right now it's kind of overcast. It's cool. I have friends come run it with me and they're like, oh, we get it. You know, you, you can recover much faster in this, in this weather than humidity because that takes a lot of energy, yeah. a lot of effort you know that drains you you sweat a lot more i would say um we're really humid here at the moment Uh, we had a a, a bad spell of of weather but it's getting very humid again and it just it's not pleasant your body just can't breathe no it's one thing breathing yourself but the body can't breathe right so you've got a nice dry heat though we do and very (laughs) cool and misty because we're by the bay so we get that mistiness of it too so it's 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 been very really lucky to have that weather we well, were saying there with with missing out on Napa's marathon itself. Are you planning to go back next year and and tick that one off as your home? So my first my first half marathon was the Napa half marathon in 2022, mm-hmm. um, and I wanted to go back and do the the full eventually. The problem in this case it is in March, and then I if I get a Bo- if I if I get into Boston, I will do Boston. Mm-hmm. That's been something that I can't even say. I can't believe I'm even saying that out loud to you. Yeah. Like this is insane. I'm still saying that, given like when I started. When I started this year, I never thought that was even a thing that I could, that would be a possibility. Uh, I just wanted to complete a marathon. That was my goal. There was no, you know, no, no time. I just wanted to complete a marathon. I knew like I had a condition in me. Eventually, I think I want. I want to do the the Napa Valley Marathon. Um, if I get into Boston, then I won't do it. Well, and you can then, do it any time, and you've you've you've, exactly. you've certainly. I thought you were a lot younger than you than your post said you were the other day. I thought you were same age as myself. Yeah, well, I'm I'm 36. <laughs> you're you're a baby. You're I a am, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 44. Yeah, I I get I get confused for a lot younger. I guess um, I am 44. Um, that's it's, yeah. It's, 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 just, it's, it's good it's living. Genes. That's what it is. Yeah, good genes and good it, living. It's the wine. It's the wine. <laughs> 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 um yeah i think that that uh i have time to do the napa um but also if i see i am if i get a good number there then a good time then i will do boston in 2025 yeah. i think and then but next year i think the first for next year for me would be to not worry about BQing or PRing. i want to after you know next year if i do boston i want to have a good time i want to run for fun as well and enjoy the marathons you know i've been really focused on timing and pacing and pring 
that um and it's not a bad thing it it drives me it's been a driver for me but i also want to run a race that i don't have to worry about pring and i just want to enjoy the the atmosphere right um i think oftentimes and for me this particular race last time it wasn't a sm very small by the way it was a very it's a local race not that big cim CI is gonna be massive i think la was my biggest great introduction to like a, what a big race looks like yeah it's it's World produced, for all produced, tons of people, so much energy. I loved it. Um, Santa Rosa, very, very small, very, very like a local race, you know. Um, so I could, I could focus on, on that and my pacing and, you know. But I also want to enjoy and take it in, you know, do the bigger ones. You know, I'm thinking of doing it New York next year. Um, and and that one I just want to have a good time with because I hear it's a, it's a fun race. Um, so I, I think I want to also just pivot from the PR inside of things and just enjoy enjoy racing so with with boston definitely being on the cards and new york for fun would you consider then looking at the rest of the uh the the big marathons to to get the six done would that be on the cards in the future possibly <laughs> and, the, and and it's funny i never thought that would be a, an even a thing but i think that that would probably my husband was like, "You're probably gonna do that eventually, right?" I'm like, "You're probably gonna get bored. You're probably gonna want a new, a new challenge and, and strive for that." So the answer is possibly. Yeah, you can't rule it out. No, no, I would never, I, I, I would never say no to this going forward, just because I, I never thought I'd do a marathon in general. Yeah. Um, and then look at me now. So um, I, I, I would say it's a possibility for sure, a very strong win, but in the future. Yeah, get get the, the the main the main immediate goals out the way first, and then see see what yeah, kind of takes yeah. on from there. Absolutely, and and I would say that um, you know, prior to even training for a for for any marathon, I was just running for fun. I was really running for 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 me. I love I love the way I felt. Um, I started running consistently in May of twenty twenty. You know, with the pandemic and everything closing, and I was in the worst sh shape ever, and, and I was drinking every single day, um, snacking. I think it was just the way, it was just the world was was in chaos, right? Yeah. And um, and I felt into this hole that I I felt comfortable just in drinking and eating junk food, and it wasn't like me to do that, but I was doing it. And I looked in the mirror one day, and I'm like, didn't recognize myself. I'm like, yeah. this is not the person that I that I kn know I I could be. And I and I looked at pictures. I'm like, wow, I don't see myself in this person um i don't think i was very happy you know i think i was just I think, probably depressed or or going through things and i was coping with with drinking and um i'm not a big drinker so that was surprising as well but i would gained weight um i wasn't really happy and but i was content yeah and then going from that starting to run i, I went for like a quick run and i remember this is me not knowing any you know I'm so much better educated now about running, but I had a, my old Nikes um, that I wore and they're probably like 10 years old, but they're, they're like fashion Nikes. They're not even yeah. running shoes. I don't, I didn't know about running. I, this is how, how much I've, I've Certainly I've weren't carbon plated. <laughs> yeah, they, no, they weren't. They were old that I wore for fashion night and I started running in them and I got shin splints. So I started running and as you know, the rule is, He's into it. Don't go yeah. too fast, too soon. You know, things that we know now and we preach and we advocate and we say it and say it and say it. But I did not know that then. Um, and I started running and, and these shoes and I got shin splints the first month and they were so painful. And so I, did, I stopped that for like from May to June. I, I, I ran and then I, I got injured. I was out for about two months because it was, it was so bad. It was just me trying to, to, to start something so quickly. And, but I love, I love, I love the running part of it. I, I just felt great. I thought like I was doing something and then I got shin splints. So I started riding my bike a lot. And then when they healed, I, I started to look then into the proper running form, um, what, what running shoes. So that's where I started to get, educate myself on the proper gear, how to ease into it. You know, the best practices for a beginner, which actually are very true. And though you see that probably in every other post that people are saying, um, it's very true. Yeah. I wasn't on so I wasn't in social media then. I was I was I didn't have an, uh, the account that I have now. So I was just figuring out myself. 
I would YouTube and I found somebody named Nate Bear, which is owns a BPN company. And he is a this big dude that was doing marathons and I was very inspired by, by him. Um, and, um, and I, I learned a lot from his channel on proper running and proper shoes and, and, and same, and so, so back, I started running back in August of 2020. And then since then, I just, uh, I've, I've loved it. Um, and haven't looked back. So I haven't what, looked back. what convinced you then to, to take, your journey onto Instagram, more more specifically on Instagram, because there's so many other avenues and, and, and opportunities there. Um, yeah, so, so what was the driving force there? Yeah, so I have a private account that I would post my runs. And, you know, as you know, if people, if a, my family or friends, if you're not a runner, they don't, really, they don't care, you know. <laughs> um, and I'll be honest, they, they do get it, but I they get it now. I think it's a different perspective now, but initially I was supposed to, Hey, I ran five miles today. I run four miles today. And I'm like, cool, you know? And, um, and I'm like, Oh, there's, there's gotta be a community. And I didn't know there was a running community in Instagram, social media. So I started to search for that and, and I found certain runners, but I, I wanted to separate. I didn't want to bombard my family and friends with running posts. And in, in that time, I was also, following other accounts, not just runners, but I was like people that just things that, I, that inspired me. And I was kind of, I was going through a cleansing phase. It's kind of funny I'm saying this and I haven't said this to anybody, but I started to really add perspective to like what my goals were, you know, you know, I, I was following certain accounts that I would probably never have that body type. I would never achieve, you know, things that I, 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 I would inspire, but never really, I probably would never get to. I just stopped following that. I, you know, I taught for me it was more toxic. So I I, I did a cleansing of everything and I and I started fresh. So I want to start a new account with and starting like from okay, we start with just running and follow folks folks that inspire me. And I don't mean these big names, yeah, you know, Instagrammers. I mean like just local people that are running for the fun of it, right? That's how I started. And I started posting my 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 every my every everyone for accountability. Because you know, I didn't have that support system at home no just not, not that it didn't care but it just they weren't really aware of, of 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 running like i was and they though they 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 were supportive of it they you know i was looking for a kind of a community so i found it in social media i found it in instagram right away and um quickly i realized that it, there was many people like me just posting their daily runs and um you know weekend warriors or you know people just start, starting off and i and i found that community and that's how it started um, and every day I was just posting and posting and it started growing very slowly, by the way, organically. Um, I didn't never force anything. I never thought it would be whatever it is now, but I wanted it just to connect with folks. My purpose was really to connect with people. And it still is. My number one is, and you know, my engagement is pretty good. I want to connect with people. I want to know what, you know, I want to cheer them on. I want to support them. And that for me means more than the number of followers I have that that's so not the point of this if you're here for that then you're missing the point of this yeah. community yeah and I think you know? some people fall into that trap I know I know when I first started out it's so easy I suppose from from our generation as well to to get caught up in numbers and get caught up in wanting to be liked but when as soon as you get past that you actually start seeing the people around you you start speaking to the people that matter because the people that are there for numbers they don't care about everyone else they just care about numbers and um, so those that mm -hmm. are, aren't necessarily they're they're going to give you the honest comments and and you're going to be able to have, have more of a social impact then to them as well um so was it mostly just photos to begin with or were you still doing reels as well did the reels kind of take off fairly early or is that something yeah, sure. you've just been kind of stepping into so I started just posting photos um, initially, just, and even then I, I, you know, I didn't have a Strava account even, so I was tracking it and um, what was I using? I was using, some, not Strava, another tool I was using. Garmin um, or the Garmin app or the, no, the, the Nike no. app? I'm a new, I'm, I'm a new, I'm a newbie for Garmin, by the way. So I came <laughs> back even, even in, I got a Garmin in Feva this year. I will, I'm an Apple user uh right yes um, i do have a garment now um i have a garment now <laughs> i don't I, I, when i run i run with both but i, I might i'm in, i'm in tech so everything's in my house and my it's all i'm all apple i'm all connected so 
Um, we'll talk about that next. That's a, that's a, <laughs> that change that was a, was a big changer for me. Um, but photos first. I was using um, something some 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 tool to track my runs. But I then started with Strava. I started I created a Strava account. And it was cool to see just my 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 overall mileage. And at the time, I was just posting um, my runs. And then I live I do live in a beautiful area. I would admit it's beautiful here. So I wanted just to show, okay, see, like, this is where I'm at. You know, since be, you know behind wine vineyards and and artwork and stuff like that. And the, it was probably a whole year that I just was doing that. It was just what I was doing. I didn't even think about reels or videos at the time. And then. Um, I did read an article that um, talked about, and this is where me initially, okay, well, how can I reach more people? How can I get, a, 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 you know, how can I reach more runners? Yeah. Well, reels is the way, you know, videos are the way to go. So how can I connect with more people? So that, that's how that, that started off is to connect with other folks. Um, so I started, reel, started reels a year after. And quickly I realized that that was like a huge, you know, view, the views on those just were in, insane compared to just photos. So how, for do example, stay, my, how do you stay so creative with it though i mean like i know. it is just something that just happened it was i i can't exp, i cannot explain it 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 just is i i'm constantly thinking of these ideas i have a, my, my my notes in my in my phone i, I I'm constantly just <laughs> and i'm constantly thinking of them and it's just fun it's like a fun creative outlet so i, I will tell you this so you know i'm a i'm an engineer i've been in, in i've been in an office situation for most of my career with COVID, I came home and like everybody else, and we work remotely. My current job is a remote job for me. Though there's an office location, but I work remotely. I'm an extrovert. I feed off people's energy, so I think I have this creativeness, this outlet, this energy that I need to channel somewhere. And because I'm in my office the whole time with nobody around, my husband and he's upstairs working, but I can't bug him that much. I needed this creative creative outlet to let loose. And I found Reels was that. And at first I was like, okay, am I sharing too much? Am I being silly? But you know what? Like, who cares? Just be authentic and just do you and just see what happens. And it, it's been great. So since then I, I started doing Reels and um and funny, it may, may, and I started making fun of runners. It just it were it's not a, it's not such a serious thing, you know, you know, though we do take it serious sometimes, it's just you know, I make fun of myself or I make Pokemon. Put fun of myself. I think that's what caught folks is just making fun of runners. Um, on my, mostly on my style, you know, and I think that's what people gra gravitated towards um, initially. So that they be, does become kind of the comedy reels I was doing, making fun of of, of runners, uh, things that I discovered myself I was doing, and that kind of kind of hit a, a um, it hit a know it people. They, they it's, it's, a, it's a it's a it's a bit of a niche because there's not that many that do similar things to the way you're doing it. And I think I've mentioned it a couple of times, but I love the reel that you did. And I think you shared it a couple of times now as well. The reel you did with the uh, recovery tools, the um, oh. foam roller, the massage gun, and just walking past it or, uh, <laughs> every day, every day walking past because we all do it. We don't do it nearly as much as we should. And that's a, so that's one, that's one example that we all and many of us, including myself, have been saying, you know, things that you should be doing, foam rolling, massage going, you know, every yeah. day, you know, I keep your legs fresh, you know, how do you run, you know, this, by doing this, you know, I think we're, we're selling this to people. And that's, it's not really true sometimes. We're, we're saying what to do, but we're not doing their stuff. I, I don't do it all the time. I'll be honest. I don't foam roll as much as I should. I do the massage gun almost every day, but I'm not foam rolling or stretching or all these. I should be doing more of it. But the reality is I'm not. So I'm making fun of that because people are really feeling like you should be doing this. And of course, that makes sense from a concept and getting better at it. But I could tell you from a person that, it, you know, has been right, I don't do it all the time and it's, I'm okay. Um, but, and I'm older, I'm 44. <laughs> Things do hurt and, yeah. and I do formal, but um, I don't do it as often. And I think that was a, a fun one to do because we all claim that, to do it or talk about it or um you know every micro influencer i say micro because we're all world that are just little little micro influencers trying to say things and i'm sorry i don't say i'm, I'm an influencer all these people that are online <laughs> are you, well you are you are an influencer no, I, I think I, was I, it? I hate that sorry i'm a con i through content creation creator or something but yeah I, you are creator, yeah, creator. It, 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 it's, it's so 
you're you're a so, creator to yourself, but you're an influencer to so, to so many through everything you're doing. Because I think because you are making you're making fun of yourself and, and the, the way the way runners are, and you're adding humor to it. You're showing that that it's a serious running serious, but at the same time, it's not that serious. And uh, there's a lot of a lot of obstacles that could be overcome with humor as well. Absolutely, well said. I agree. <laughs> And I don't mean it well when I make fun of it. I'm making fun of myself. I think it's just yeah. things I discovered. So it's okay from a, it comes from a good space. Yeah. And I, I felt that I thought that's been received well. You mentioned your husband a couple of times. Um, does he run as well? Is he athletic? Oh, I know he's athletic from having seen photos of you together. You're both very very well defined. Um, but is he a runner or I'm assuming he's cycling a lot as well from some of the some of the, the footage that you've got. He's either running next to you and it's a very, very good uh, gimbal on the camera or he's cycling. He's cycling. That's a trick. Um, he, yeah, he, so he's, he's had a, a really awesome journey as well. He's, he's probably in the best trip of his life um, working out um, and cycling. He's not a runner. He, do, he doesn't get it. Okay. He does not like running. And I and I and I go. I get it. I mean, it's not for everybody. If you if you if you don't enjoy it, don't force it. Um, I love it. I felt like I was kind of built for it. You know, just it just I I love the the I love running. Um, he does not. He he hates it. Um, he also hated when I was training for and you know, I've been training for marathons because you know as you know it takes a lot of time and yeah. it consumes your life. So he's like, when do I get you back on the weekend so we can go hiking? You know, do something together. So. I'm taking a bit of a break before CIN, so we're now hiking and doing things together. Um, because it does really consume it's really certainly your does. Life. It certainly does. That's I've I've for the three marathons I've done so far, I did two 12 week programs and then a three, four week program because I came off the back of an injury and I wasn't going for any time. But this time around, I chose to do a 16 week program and I'm finding it so difficult. Anyone has a 16 week program. It's a different mental game. It's a different physical game. Uh, I'm just finding it so so difficult, so draining. But then that's probably me as well, going a little bit further than I should with with my build up to it. But uh, no, you're right. It, you're so tired a lot of the time. You need to, you feel you're eating a lot more, drinking a lot more, and most importantly, you're not in a lot of the time. My wife, go, I'll go out walking with the dog, and I'll be out for two three hours, and you think, oh, it's a long yeah. time out of the day that. Your, your loved ones aren't getting to see you because you're you're pushing for something that only matters to you at the end of the day. Yeah, a fantastic point. I think you, you made it there. I the yes, the first two have been the long training plans for me have been pretty long and they're grueling. You know, when you're in a oh man, they're they're just really grueling. Primarily if you're doing like a speed work and then a long long run with things and surges in there. It, it takes a lot of out of you energy wise, and um, and are, are you take you take a day off? Which are, are you? What's your typical? Are you doing like a day off or two days off? Or are you running almost every day? I, I run every second typically. day, typically every oh, second day. Got it. I, okay. Occasionally, I will do back to back, but that's now. I, but previous to that, I would only ever run a Tuesday, a Thursday. Um, I would go to park run on the Saturday, and then I do a long run on the Sunday. So usually only about four days maximum in a week. Got it. Okay, so your weekends are taken out by running. Yeah. 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 That that's that's tricky for your spouse because that's maybe the time you guys want to hang out together, right? Or do something. So so yeah, so so yeah. So I think going into CIM, I'm gonna fine tune a little bit. I don't think I'm gonna do such a long training. I I I've I've I'm pretty conditioned, maintain maintenance and then tweak a little bit towards, you know, closer to it. Of course, with some training in place, but I'm going to take some time, some time off and, and go easy. You, yeah, you've got a really week. good foundation there now as well. Right. This is my first week back, by the way. This is my, my, my second run since the marathon um, today. So I'm just easing into it and it feels good. But the legs are still, I feel a little sore. I'm, I'm feeling it, you know, I'm still recovering. I, I gave it all I had. So I, I'm, and I'm feeling that. And you, you still it's look all- super fresh at the end as well. That, <laughs> you, that's either a very good act, but you did look no, super fresh. I, you know, I wish it's funny. The One of the mo- most comments I get from my social media is, do you even sweat, dude? You don't even sweat. You don't even run, dude. You don't, you didn't run these miles. And I'm not a big sweater. I, I don't sweat that much. And um, I wish I could have people, um, 
I met people when I'm runs in a, in a, in a, in a, you know, I'm not sweaty, but I met people when I'm running and they're like, Hey, you know, I'm like, Mount, you know, I was Mount, so I met somebody, I was Mount 18 into it and I wasn't sweaty. And he didn't, he was like, Oh, you started, I'm like, no, I'm, I'm Mount 18. And um, he's like, Oh, you don't, you don't even sweat. I'm like, I'm not a big sweater. So I don't sweat that much um, unless it's, and it's also the climate here. It's not that humid, you know, of course, given the conditions. Um, but it's the case. It's not, uh, it's not, I'm, you know, I'm hurting. It's, it's, it's hurting. It's, it's, it's not an act. It's, it's really, uh, it's, it's, I'm not a, just, I don't sweat that much. I suppose okay. it comes from yeah. your strength and conditioning as well, because you are, you are doing a lot of gym work. I haven't seen very yes. much in the way of, of, of selfies from that perspective, I suppose because with the marathon being so close, you you were focusing more on the running yeah. than the the strength and conditioning side. Yeah, I I think it's a good balance, and I think what has made me a strong runner is that I was strength conditioning before, um, you know, and I think that's that was a that has been a good foundation for me. Um, so leading to this, and also I love running, so I think leading to this and understanding kind of the 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 nutrition behind it you know the some principles that do overlap you know the you know the nutrition the you know the consistency of, of it all uh, having a plan all these things that, that you know that work i love weight training as much as money um i love going to the gym pushing weight i'm not a big you know i'm, I'm not a big person and you know i would never be the biggest in the gym but i also i i, I love going in there and just feeling good, like pushing away. I went, you know, I ran this morning, I went to the gym as well. And I love that. I need that balance. Towards the end of, of American training, of course, I didn't do much weight training because I wanted to really focus on my on, on my legs and, and, and body, make sure that I was as fresh as possible. But I'm back at, to strength training. And I think it's a big part of um, a runner is to definitely do some strength training. It'll help you. You know, I do like work, I do like workout once a week. I do upper body. Um, for me, I, I'm, I'm more of a, I like, come up like a hybrid athlete. I like to do it both. Um, and I, it's finding that balance, you know, um, and if I'm running, I prioritize running over strength training, but I don't neg neglect strength training. With being hybrid then, is it, would anything outside the field of purely running interest you in the future? Do you think like maybe try duathlon? Cause you've mentioned cycling as well. Um, Ironman maybe, would they be on possible horizons for you? Yeah. I mean, I, I would say, I would not say no. I, I, in my 20, I'm 44 now in my early twenties, I did a, I, I did a triathlon. I did a, 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 a small one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just sprint tries, right. Very, I could think of four mile run, uh, 12, and I'm sorry, I'm taking miles. Um, you're fine. I, I can work your your miles. <laughs> Most of my <laughs> listeners prefer miles. They think I'm weird okay. with kilometers. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say, I, I apologize to everybody listening out there. If, if they're like, what are you saying? Um, but I prefer, so it was a, a smart triathlon and I like that. The issue for me would be the swimming part of it. I, I, I'm a terrible swimmer. I will need to really practice that. And I have not done that often. And then, so, you know, the triathlon was in open water. It's a whole different concept than, than swimming in a pool. You know, when you see the bottom of the pool and you're in open water, it's a very different, um, even a mental thing. So Maybe I, I, I would say, I, I would say that that would, if training for a marathon can sue my life, I can imagine at this point what a triathlon would, would do, right? Because you need to consider all three aspects of it. Um, wow. That, that seems like a lot. Maybe in the future, down the road. That's maybe one to convince your husband to get into as well, because he <laughs> looks like a swimmer. He's got that swimmer physique about him. Yes. I think he... The running though, I gotta. The running part is the selling, the hard sell. Yeah, part. the hard sell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I'm noticing as well. You're sporting your Nike, uh, your Nike branding. There is that part and parcel of your team Nike uh, range, or how much do they ask of you as a as a okay. uh, member of the team? Yeah, that's a that's a great question, and I think that I'm just gonna say that this is wild that that this has happened, and they reached out to me. A lot of folks asked me, "How did you get?" How does how do you get sponsored by Nike? And I'm like, well, I in prior to Nike, I've been sponsored with some other smaller companies here in, in the US. And they just they find me through online and they like what I do. And Nike came across, they sent me a DM and they're like, hey, um, and it wasn't Nike, it was like your mar your marketing team. They don't themselves go they send a marketing team, by the way. Yeah. 
So if you ever get a direct Mikey, uh, I would question question that's <laughs> legitimate. But if, if there's a marketing team sent asked asked to talk to me, and then they they wanted to they say we have this big name brand that wants to you know work with you. Um, would you want to meet with them? And and, and they're like we can't disclose who they are, but at the meeting Zoom call, well you'll know who they are right away. And I'm like sure, you know I'm like are you for real? I like, yeah. and it's always hard to know what's real, not real in social media because a lot of companies, you know, as you as you yourself, you probably get a lot a lot of emails or a lot of DMs about product lines or, you know, try these out, try these shoes out, this this cream or yeah. or whatever, you know. So I wasn't sure if it was gonna how truthful this was until that I would Zoom call and I saw Nike switch in the background and there was a board of people <laughs> and they had a PowerPoint and I'm like, wow, this is insane. Um so the deal is I am sponsored by Nike. The conditions of my of me and, and you know they they it's a paying gig. Um, I could only wear Nike uh, on social media, um, both TikTok and Instagram. Um, what they ask for me is just to represent myself and you know wear their stuff, and and I get to try, you know, the semi every the cool latest shoes. You know, basically everything that I, I it's a it's. It, it's, it's a hardship a very, by the sounds of it. <laughs> it's a very hardship, you know. I'll say they they sent me all these awesome things um, to try out and 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 um, and give my honest opinion. Um, prior to Nike, you know, I would say, and I'll be honest, I I I would run in Sockanese. Um, the Saucony endorphin speeds were the ones that kind of changed the perspective of running for me. I'm like, oh wow, you know, I shoe that, you know. Because you know when you going from like you know shin splints to a, 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 a regular trainer to then a, a shoe with the plate, it's a game changer. Yeah. Um, but I would I but I would race with Nike, so I did I had marathons and I would I would use the, the Nike. I prefer a Nike Vaporfly to race, and I race with other. I, I try other shoes out, and I I think I always went to the Nike Vaporflies. So this was to me like a natural, like oh yeah, I love the brand, of course. Um, so I'm I'm po- I do a few posts a month for them. Um, there's events that we'll be doing together, um, and but they don't demand much from me other than kind of representation of the brand. They're more they're more happy just to let you be you and and yes, which I which I think I I've, I've had yes, and I, so I said no to many other because they want to control what I I could put out there. Yeah, but with Nike, they're they're like we like your authenticity, we like what you do, what you represent. We want, you know, can you know, so that was kind of like, you know, don't change anything that you're doing. You, this is kind of what we're, we're saying you, you could post uh, whatever creativity you would want to do it. It's do it the way you, with your voice and your perspective. It's very subliminal then, because it's, I suppose the, the nearest comparison that I have is when you see anyone from the Brooks Run Happy team, both international and UK based. I, I am assuming uh, that Brooks asked them to change their names. Because it will be Sonso Brooks Run Happy Team, and that's quite a change for me. Whereas those Nike being argumentally a much bigger, well-known brand, they're quite happy for you to, to just continue being you. That's that's awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I I have a in fact when they had this outing recently, the Brooks um, Run Happy, and I didn't realize there were so many. There's a lot of them. <laughs> a lot of them yeah it's a lot of them. i never run in brooks i i was sure that i, I still need to test you know even after maybe after nike i'll test it unfortunately i can only run with nike and, and i don't mind it by the way <laughs> i haven't but, i haven't tried alphas or vapors yet and i would like to give them a go um i run predominantly in in brooks i uh, i enjoy it but you're right there's so many shoes feel so different yes. hawka are very very good for me but they're also bad for me I, I go a little bit too crazy in them so i would love to try nike at some point but Again, it's 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 not my immediate. <laughs> it, it's no, something in it. the future. No, absolutely, I get it. Um, back to the the Brooks family mm-hmm. thing, and I think it's this oh, in perspective. You know, I love what they're doing. I think it, it, they're anybody coming that does like a positivity or you know showcases you know runners. You know, I I, I love that. And I think Brooks does a fantastic job um, with that. You know. I would say Nike doesn't have that type of, you know, I think books that they don't, they don't, they're not taking us out and doing an outing like this. They're just kind of do your thing type of deal. Um, I don't know the Brooks deal, by the way. I don't know how that, I look at if it does for those folks. Yeah. 
I, I don't know if they just give them free things in my uh, situation. And I want to be honest, here, just right. I'm mm-hmm. getting paid. I'm getting it's like a salary. Like, but yeah, it's, it's I don't a, think they're getting paid. I think they get paid in kind. So they get a box full of items. They have to do a, yeah. an opening, and they get taken away. And again, I believe they get they they get paid for them. They got taken to Portugal a couple of years ago, and they get taken all around. Wow. Wow. Uh, and they do a whole they they all do a, a massive thing together. Um, a couple of times a year. So that's I. I know a couple of the Brooks runners, so I, it's always on the. I'm on the periphery, so I I, I learn a little, a couple of little bits, but I don't think they're getting paid. So I suppose then, if you're getting, if if it's an income and, um, your agreement is to purely wear Nike, then they're not going to necessarily be saying, okay, you got to come to this event, you got to come to that event. There yeah. there, there are stipulations in place for you. That you're already doing everything that, that needs to be done. Right. So for me, it was a very natural, a natural in, you know, and it, it was like a, when they presented the offer, this is last year. And I'm like, yes, I mean, how can I, pa-? and this is fantastic, you know, just associated with just the, the brand and I love the brand. Um, I know it's, it's had some, some controversy behind it and I, and I'm not ignorant to that. Um, but, um, and, you know, with, with Nike, as you know, either people love it or hate it. And, and it, it's, 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 come with a lot of you know of that as well um but i think people just have strong opinions about everything and anything yeah. you know so you know so when you say you never try nike oh the vapor facts i understand there's so many shoes i haven't tried half of them either you know and i think with, for me going back with you mentioned about kind of the hookahs you know good or bad for you socket is for that for me um i mean i they for me i was running too fast with them some of them yeah. and i love the way i the i love the way they feel and they run but what I realized, and it is, you know this as well, is that, you know, the 80-20 rule, which I think we've, we all have heard about it. And, but I, it's, it's very true. What, what, what changed for me is using a shoe that slows me down for the purpose of that. And I found in Nike, I, I, I found my rotation and, and I love that. And, 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 I, and so I'm, I'm really good where I'm at here with, with them and I'm happy with, with the product, but I needed to find the shoe that worked for me, Yeah, you know, um, with when training for a marathon, you know, if you're like a, 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 a runner that doesn't care about racing, then I think any shoe it's fine, you know, as long as, long as you're happy. There's just so much opinions about about what to wear, when not to wear, how to run, when not to run. Do you care about pace, the mileage, all these all these things that we 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 put out there. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter as long as you're happy and you're running for whatever it is that you're running for, right? Yeah. Um, Likely so with with Nike. So another thing about this account that has ha- has happened to me is I didn't realize the the business side of things. I so you know early so early on I got these endorsements and these deals, you know with Cliff, um, you know Disney Disney um, sent me to Florida for a week, and um, and all these other brands that I can't name, but I've partnered with them <laughs> as well. But everything has been everything has been like a pain. Like, aspect to it you know so I, I started making money really early on like year one and i'm like this is insane i'm like people are getting paid like to to and, and i didn't realize that was even a, a thing and and now it's like a full-on uh, it's wild and and you know i have nike i also have amazon i have an amazon so far and i work with amazon as well and um and that's pretty awesome itself like they come to me and i find with them in a different space and it's just another it's like this, these things are just generating income. It's pretty cool. But it's but not taken away from your love put, of running though. That's the main thing. No, is, is no, no, you're no. still enjoying it. It's not just turning into a job and we all no, love our jobs, but it comes hard after a while, doesn't it? Yeah. I would say that the, the best part of this is that all these companies that I've have worked with in the past and working with now have, have told me just be creative, you know, do your thing. And that's probably the best thing they could say, because then, it doesn't feel like a job. I'm just doing my content and doing my thing. And it just feels like, like I'm still running. Yes. You know, running itself, you know, well, just take back the job part of it. I think training for a marathon, training for something at some point just feels, it just, you know, the, the, my point I was trying to make is before I was training for a race, I didn't want to train for a race and hate running Yeah, because I need to, I need to follow this particular program. Right. And I know folks have gone burnt out by training and then, you know, they, they stopped. 
I was nervous that that would happen to me that I would I would train for something and then I needed to go out and train for this and I'm like I'm not feeling it I I'm hating training right now, but I think it's on the opposite for me. I think it's challenged me in ways that I never thought I would be challenged. Primarily, like I never done speed work before. I love doing track workout now. I always get nervous going into it because I need to like hit certain numbers, you know, and I'm, I get, I get you know butterflies and antsy, you know, and then the night before I can't sleep. It's so weird. It still happens now. But once I hit the track and once I know, I'm like, everything goes away and I'm like in the zone. And I think those are the, those are the things I'm taking away that it, it's, it scares me and it's challenging. And that's, that's, and that's what I love about it. Um, now, the, every, the easy days, the days they just go out there and just do like an easy, easy run. Um, those are days are not always fun to me because they're just boring runs. Yeah, and I'll be yeah. honest, you know, like 80% of the ones are, are boring but they need to be done, right? I think that's where it's important to have something to listen to um, or have something to do. If you're if you're going and you're you're doing a video, that's your distraction. That's making the easy run a little bit more bearable because you've got something to focus on. Because you're right, I, I hate going out for the easy runs because you're just, it's taking forever. I don't want to do it. <laughs> yes. Um, I was listening to your podcast, to, to your episode um, nine um, today in my, in my run. So, See, see, it's just more enjoyable when you listen to it. And it's, it's right. You're, you're just zone out and just listen to that. And that's been my approach as well. I think podcasts have been my has been my my thing when, or, or audiobooks. So music sometimes um depends on on the training, but I, I think that the podcast side of it or audiobooks slow things down for me. Um and I just kind of zone out with that. I mean, there's so many things you've mentioned throughout the duration of our conversation and it, the track as well. It just makes me think of different reels or different things you've done. And it's that's, <laughs> this has been so awesome to have this chance to sit down and chat to you. Because the, the track, I think not so long ago, you'd done where it was um, track etiquette and of, of yes. where you run and where you don't run. Now, I don't do track at all, so I wouldn't have known that. But then seeing you sharing it, it's, it's, in, it's given me that knowledge. So I didn't know there was rules either. when I. So luckily, there's a track near my house that is vacant mm -hmm. oftentimes their school and, and their children and you can use it you know during school hours but this track is vacant so i'm, I'm lucky I, I get to use it and there's been situations that i've seen folks you know on on the first you know i so i think that i know the fast folks lean one two and three typically right and then four five and six or seven eight, eight what are the, the, the slower folks typically these things are are empty so um i get bling one but i didn't know and I warm up in one. I'm going super slow. I didn't know there was etiquette there. So I'm my, maybe hogging a, a lane that I shouldn't hog. And but there's folks that I see there with running their, with their dogs in lane one or running the opposite. Or um, and I'm oh wow, this is not right. And then there was a sign that I saw and it had the rules and oh that makes more sense. So yeah, learning the etiquette is, is important just so you don't do them. But it's okay you don't know it if you because I didn't know them either until this year. And it's okay not to know because you just don't know any any better. But there is there are rules to the track um, that you may, you could follow. And I think in this case for me, there was nobody in there most of the time, so it was fine. But I've been in other tracks and there's been more people, and now I'm I'm more aware of myself and what tracks to, to what lanes to use and stuff like that. So um, it's interesting. Those small things that inspire you inspire the readers. Yeah. And hopefully exactly. for a long time, it will continue to inspire you because it's, it's a daily, it's a daily dose for, for many of us, including myself. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I didn't, I'm surprised. So you don't, you do, you don't, so you don't do a lot of track workouts. So you're doing a lot of your speed it, sessions just out. Um, yeah. Well, the, it the comes way. down to a uh, geography with where I am. The, the nearest mm. track to me is uh, 30 minutes, 45 minutes drive. Mm. Um, and I, it is in the city I work in. I only work there two days a week. Um, and when you go there, it's 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 either club times or um, there's set sessions on. So it's not it's not practical for me. So everything that I do is road or trail. Um, so if it's a speed session, it's road. I completely get that. I for my house, I could get many road, primarily roads, yeah. but also go to trails. Yeah. And I try to avoid driving. I mean that that's just 
killing more time on top of your long, you know, adding, adding more time to your long. And run. then you've got to put oh, your keys somewhere. And <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. So I try to avoid that too. There's some times that I want to change and I, I, I would do it, but primarily I'm at the door and whatever I could get, you know, that that's where I'm at. Um, it helps me out too. There's some stoplights that I, I try to avoid, but you know, after that, I, I get pretty good trails here. So I'm with you on that. It's yeah. just I'm trying to minimize driving and maximizing my time because it, it really takes a lot of time to get to run, and I want to come back on time, and that's been a whole day. That's it. if you have to drive somewhere, that's even more time out of your day, and then you've got your run, and then you've got to get back, and yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm, I'm now conscious. I'm seeing the time. I don't. I don't want to take up much more of your day. So I think before we finish, um, this is actually none of this has been based on any questions. This has been so natural. I had a whole a whole base a whole uh, line of questions lined up here, but you've you've done so much of the hard work for me here. It's been fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, for anyone that is starting out, and I think because your your running journey is still really in its infancy, um being, as you said, 2020 and more in 2023 now, even though it's coming to a close. Anyone that's starting out, what's your, what would you be your, your guidance to anyone starting their journey? Uh, the most important parts that you would say? Yeah, I would say that, that's a great question. I would say that just start. Don't overthink it. You don't have to be a certain weight, a certain time in the, the year to start. I would say just start. And once you start, the f- first thing I would say is, and suggest to folks is really investing in a good pair of shoes. And I can't stress that enough. I think I got injured the, f- the first month I ran because I did not have the good pair of shoes. I had old shoes. I got shin, shin splints from it. Um, really, they were just worn out. Uh, and yeah. looking back, it was silly of me to even do that. But I didn't know any better. And I would say folks that may, may not know, they might just go into their closet and get those, you know, 15-year-old shoes they may have and just put them on and run. It may not be the best for them to do so. Um, I know a lot of folks, they go to a running store and, you know, get, you know, fitted and, and we don't all, all have a luxury, honestly, you know, we don't all have the money to pay for that. And, and, you know, I've, I'm very frugal, you know, initially, you know, so I, I, I never done the, the fitting part of things, um, but trial and error has worked for me, you know, and I would say that just go, going into a, a, going into a running shop and maybe in the shoes are a good deal, but Oftentimes they're expensive as well. And I want to, I want to acknowledge that not everybody could afford these expensive shoes and, that, and, and let's be very truthful. So folks may just go to a local mall and, and buy shoes, but that's a good start if you don't have a, 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 sh- a shoes. I would also say that start slow, ease into it um, is definitely the key. Um, take it from me. I got injured because I went in too fast trying to do too much. Um, start slow. And be patient because it takes time. Yeah. If meaning what if whatever goal you're trying to achieve, or if if you're trying to run a certain amount of time, just be patient and, and it takes time to build up to it. Um, I know it took me a while. And I would say just have fun at the end of the day, you know, enjoy what you're doing and, and know that some runs are not gonna be great they're going to suck sometimes you're going to be in pain sometimes and that's just sometimes normal because you know running is not a, you know you're, you might be sore you're like a little 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 sore so um you know just be consistent and 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 do it um don't spend don't overthink it spot on um i mean i can do more <laughs> i can say more i i, I, I can go into <laughs> i can go into taking rest days you know it's okay to take yeah. a rest day it's okay to, it's okay to not run one day. You know, when I was training for a marathon, I had a strict, a, a strict schedule that I, I, I wanted to follow. And and I am very, I'm a stickler for that. I'm like a machine. You put it in front of me, I'm going to execute. My problem was I wanted to do it even though I shouldn't have. So I what I've learned in this training block is to take days off. Yeah, and take it. You know, so looking at on an overall weekly schedule, I'm okay. I can't. I, I shouldn't. I'm tired. I'm taking today off or tomorrow off or the next day off, and it's fine. It did not. It did not hinder my overall performance. I would say. I, I think it part helped me. So I took many days off, um, and I didn't always hit my paces, and that's okay as well. And all this is fine. You know, it's just being consistent um, is the key. From everything you said there. Remember, you're not a machine, Omar. 
hey, are, you are human and everyone's human and we have our good and our bad days. <laughs> Exactly, and I, I have some, I have ideas as well. I, you know, in, in those days I just take off, and 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 it's okay. And that's what I've learned as well. You know, I because starting off initially, when if say you're, say you're, you know, luckily I have a coach as well. And the way this came about, which like, side note, I'm on my stories. Um, somebody say at when online, hey, like, do you have a coach? And I'm like, I don't have a coach. He's like, so what are you doing? If, you know, train for this marathon. I'm like, well, I have a online plan. He's like, what about? Do you want to? Is it okay if I take, give you pointers? And that's how this relationship, me and my coach, started off. And it's been a fantastic, a fantastic journey. And I'm so great, so grateful that this happened. And and he coached me for the first marathon, coached for, for this second marathon. And um, and I've learned so much from my coach. But I also know, and I want to be very clear that we, we all cannot afford a coach. And that, that's okay. There's a lot of times online that people could do. And and it's okay to skip a day if you can do that. You know, it's just it's because because you'll be like, what does it mean? You know, you know, we gotta hit these miles this week, and it's it's it could be daunting not having to talk to somebody with you know about that plan. Yeah. And and I will tell you first thing that it's okay to to not always hit those days in your training plan. Well, I'm gonna draw it to a close just now because I think we could go on forever, and I'm I would love to get you back on. Um, but I suppose. Maybe, maybe as we work our way down and you get through your next lot of goals. Uh, but thank you very much. I'm going to actually read, read a little bit now. Thank you very much for joining me today, Omar. Um, your dedication, passion and insights you've shared uh, really resonate with myself and I'm pretty sure it will with the listeners as well to help us uh, inspire. Oh, so you help, you're helping inspire many of us to lace up our shoes and chase our goals. And personally, I can't wait to see the, what the future brings for you. Boston and beyond. Awesome. Thank you so much. It's been a fantastic um, time talking to you. I appreciate your time. Like I was saying before the recording played, I absolutely loved every minute that I had talking with Omar. He graciously gave me an hour of his morning. He'd been for a run and he was going into another meeting just afterwards, but I loved speaking to Omar and had been looking forward to it for some time. His rise to Instagram fame has been justifiable and I think anyone that follows his content will agree. He has amazing reels, he has amazing takes, his dedication and hard work is paying off and yeah I can't wait to see what the future holds for Omar. As much as I follow Omar on a pretty much daily basis, whenever he pops up, he, he does pop up at the top of my feed because I interact with his content. And like we know, if you're interacting with someone, they will appear at the top. Anyone else that you're not maybe interacting with as much does kind of get funneled down. But before I get digress, um, I wasn't aware that he was an ambassador for some of the companies he mentioned. I knew about Nike, um, although... It was sort of confused by not seeing much in the way of um, promotion of the brand. But having listened to what he was saying and knowing that he's getting paid for it, um, but at the hardship of life that he can't wear anything but Nike. I mean, that's 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 really got to be hard, hasn't it? Getting all the, the branding and the clothing sent your way and that's all you can wear. Um I didn't know about Amazon and I didn't know about a couple of the other ones, but now I think about it, looking back at some of the reels, seeing Amazon boxes and et cetera, it makes sense now. It's all subliminal and they aren't asking him to be something that he's not. They're just asking him to continue being the awesome content creator that he is. And I think that's amazing. They're letting Omar play to his strengths and uh, supporting him along the way. So like I say, I can't wait to see what the future holds for Omar, especially in his running journey. He was so close to getting the three hour or the sub three hour marathon. And again, from someone who is goal driven like myself, to see someone so close to three hour or so close to sub three hour, but that wasn't his goal. He 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 beat his goal of three hours and three minutes. And to get a three hour one minute and 40 seconds and not feel that that one minute and 40 seconds hurt 
that's a completely different level of athlete altogether from people like myself that are just trying to push and we're all pushing, but at the same time, we, we see that what one minute uh, close to where we are wanting to get to. And it's a, it's a massive stumbling block. It's maybe a different mindset altogether to think about, to really approach things differently. And I'm definitely going to learn from my conversation with Omar. Fingers crossed and all being well with the podcast, we can get him back in the future, especially after he demolishes Boston. But on that topic, let's talk about what's happening with season two's finale and anything that's coming in season three. I haven't given it much thought at the moment. I've got a few projects on the cards, but I am coming back for season three. Season two has been a challenge. Getting a weekly podcast out is a massive time sink. It does take its strain and have its pressures. I am enjoying it, but I might look at winding back just that little bit. Now, that may mean going back to a fortnightly podcast. I may just continue with a weekly now that I am up and running with it. But between now and season three, I may do all my guest recordings and just make my life as easy as possible. I do have Amsterdam to worry about. I don't know how long the break is going to be. I would estimate probably around about four weeks, four or five weeks, and that takes me very, very close to Amsterdam. So I may have to do quite a lot of pre-recording. I could wait until after it's done, but then that's a month and a bit down the line. Maybe a bit too much of a wait for some people. And I don't, as much as I'm not driven by numbers. I'm not driven by statistics. I don't want people to forget about the point 99. I want it to be fresh. I want people to go, you know what? I haven't heard that in a while. Season three starting. Let's give it a listen. So my plan at the moment, as I've kind of hinted there is, is to stick it a weekly, but get everything ready and prepared well in advance of season three dropping. With that in mind, I will Always listen to any shouts for guests that you might have. Now, I have a few on the cards. I have brands that we didn't manage to get to this season um, or that I've been in discussions with in the past and we are planning to get them on for season three. There are Instagram influencers or Instagram community members. There are people that I either have agreements with to get on or I would love to get on. But I also want to hear from you guys. Who do you want to hear from? I have already heard from Bob Burrell and he has given me a fantastic um, suggestion. So hopefully we can build upon that a little more on that in the interim. We'll put out some content on that as well if we can make it happen. But um yeah, you let me know who you want to hear from. I'll make contact with them. I'll see if I can get them on the podcast because there's no point in me putting someone on the show that people aren't interested in. I am here to give you the opportunity to hear from the people that you would like to hear from, the people that you communicate with on a daily basis in the community and the stories and journeys that mean the most to you. But that's about it. Uh, I'll just cover quickly some of the platforms or places you can find out more about the podcast. I will be posting in the interim on different uh, platforms, as I say. So I'll be on Facebook in the search bar. Just search The Point 99 Podcast or you can go to facebook.com forward slash The Point 99 Podcast. There'll be some content going up on there. Instagram, of course, The Point 99 Podcast. I will be posting other content on there, probably a little bit of duplication and overlap. We have our Discord server, which is slowly taking baby steps to being more of the community hub. But I know it's difficult because it is an app that a lot of people aren't familiar with. We have the website, which is www.thepoint99podcast.com. That will be making steps and evolutions in the interim adding in gated content, private members area, etc. A lot of plans, a lot of uh, things on my wish list. So let's see if we can make that happen. It's been fantastic to see all the faces wearing the merchandise as well. So if you are interested in supporting the podcast, now it doesn't support me monetary. I have no 
interest in making money from the podcast. It's really just about sharing uh, the podcast as a whole and by doing that on a t-shirt. While you're out running, someone sees the branding, gives it a listen. That's all great. But it's more important to support the guys over at Twisted Running who are supporting us and partnered with us. So if you are interested, we do have the single t-shirt there at the moment. Um, I think it's quite a nice design. I like it. I'm going to order myself another few colors, but I do have another design in the works and hopefully we can get that up in the interim and ready for season three. But just to reiterate, if, if you would like to support me in any way, that's the best way to do it. Supporting by sharing and um, supporting my partners is the best way you can support me as a whole. Of course, if you do end up buying one of the t-shirts, tag me. I want to do a collage of everybody eventually, but it's been great to see all the folks wearing stuff so far. I love how they feel. I love how they look. So hopefully you do too. Finally, you can also join the Strava run community. Now, as Ryan Miller pointed out in season one, all you need to do is join the community and almost forget about it. But it gives you the opportunity to see your fellow runners, see the routes that they're doing, the efforts they're going to and the plans that they're working with. You can find us at the Point 99 podcast on Strava, but you can also go to the website. Uh, if you hover over the home button, it brings a drop down and you can hit the Strava and it'll take you straight there. Then the last place that you can get in contact with us, if it's not through the DMs, you can drop us an email at the Point 99 podcast at gmail.com. My email is always open. If you have anything you want to share, if you just want to drop in for a chat, I'll be there to read your message, give you a response. It's the same on my own Instagram page, in my own DMs, on the pages DMs. And you can get me at Mr. Underscore Steve underscore runs. And I do enjoy a good chat. Maybe don't respond as quick as I would like sometimes. Like I've been saying, all season work is manic at the moment. I've got a lot of projects on. I take a lot on board, but I love doing it. But I also love speaking to and hearing from you guys. That's it for me, though. There's no fear of this episode being anywhere near of the monster that the season one finale was. I've tried to keep it as compact and compressed as possible, as I have with every episode this season. But uh, I'll just reiterate that. You let me know what you want to hear in uh, season three and I will do my best to provide it. In the interim, please continue listening to all the other podcasts in the wider family or the wider running community, the Adventure Blether Girls, Press Play and Run, What the Fartlek, and you probably are already listening to them in advance of listening to me. But if you don't and you fancy checking them out, go and check them out. They are all amazing amazing people and uh, yeah just share the love and uh, yeah that's that's about it until season three rolls around keep up to date with the socials but otherwise stay safe enjoy your runs and you'll hear from me soon <laughs>